Under the administration of President Zanad Danko Akufuado, Ghana's healthcare landscape has seen significant policy shifts, investments and challenges. From implementing the National Health Insurance Scheme reforms to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, the administration's efforts to improve healthcare accessibility and quality are at the forefront of national discourse. Nonetheless, some think all the announced progress remain on paper only. On all issues today, we ask, why is Ghana's healthcare system the way it is despite all the millions pumped into the sector? Where do the funds go? I am Kemeni Amano, and my guest in this edition is himself a medical doctor. He has worked at all levels of healthcare delivery in the country. Today, he is the president's backbone on health policy. He joins us as we assess the successes and shortcomings and what the future holds for healthcare in Ghana. My guest on the program is Dr. Anthony Insia Asari. You're welcome to the program, Doc. Thank you. Millions of dollars have been sunk into Ghana's health sector. Here we are today, really. Um, at best, would say that the service is good if you can pay for it. But in a lot of cases in the public sector, the healthcare delivery there is really poor. Why is that the case? Where did all that money go? Thank you very much. You know, health is very expensive. Nobody can say health is very cheap. But health is wealth. And I've always been saying that there's also wealth in health. So you can create wealth from health. And if you are healthy, you are wealthy. A healthy nation is a wealthy nation. So we have to continuously pump. Any amount of money which is pumped into health is not a waste. Mm -hmm. It's an investment. So you, don't, you should take health as not as a, an expenditure. We take it as an investment because you invest on people, in people's health from, from the womb right down to mm -hmm. the time that uh, he goes back to the grave. What do we have to show for the millions we have sunk into the health sector? There's a lot you, you could show, especially with this present government since January 7, 2017. Um, people have been saying that, oh, what, how many hospitals have been built since this government came to power? Today I'll give you examples of hospitals which were inherited which, were, which have been completed, mm. and new ones which have started. And most of them are there about 99% stage of uh, completion, and some of also moving on. You see, so we spend a lot of money, you say millions of dollars. Indeed. We spend, you know, know that in 20, 2020, when COVID-19 also came, every country, not only Ghana, also spent a lot of money to make people safe. Remember the very... Um, a good statement that, that His Excellency the President made in one of his uh, fellow Ghanaians, that I know how to bring the economy back, but I don't know how to bring a dead body back. Mm -hmm. So I will make sure that Ghanaians are safe and healthy, and God being so good and good uh, straight to his ways, I think we are one of the best countries that manage COVID-19. Mm. I'm not saying it, it was published that we are among the three countries who have managed COVID-19 very well. If you look at our case fatality, it was less than 1%. Mm -hmm. No country had that. People will say that, oh, maybe we are not seeing the people who, had, who were having COVID and died and all these things. But I can tell you that during the, those periods, we didn't see, as we saw in some other countries, where crematoriums and cemeteries were full. It didn't happen. All right. I want to draw you back to the question of what we have to show yes. uh, for the millions we've sunk into the health sector. Yes. And then you mentioned that government has completed some uh, facilities for, that it has met and starting uh, others from this, scratch. Yes. Are all these under the Agenda 111? No. Okay. Talk I'll to me about I'll start from these uh, VAMED projects. You remember that uh, VAMED is VAMED Engineering Company Limited. It started some hospitals, which uh, the, former, the previous government started. They are, there were 10 of them. One in central region, which started in, which they, they brought in the funds. You see, today I will explain and differentiate between somebody who thought about something, about a project, brings in the fund, goes through a, parliament, a cabinet approval, mm -hmm. parliamentary approval, and the money comes, 
and he starts and finishes. And then you come and meet the money. You, you, there's a project ongoing, either you finish it or not. I'll, I'll explain all of them here today. And then do somebody who also have started from the scratch to completion. So if you look at the VAMET project, I'll, I'll start from there. If you look at the VAMET project, the VAMET project are about seven different types of projects. When we came to power in 2017, there was a project, for example, 10 polyclinics mm -hmm. or 10 hospitals, I'll call it smaller hospitals. Some were 15 bed hospitals, some were 30 bed hospitals in the central region at Akonfode, uh, Bimpojaga, Bimpojiga, Biruwa, Bisiasi, Darampong. A kumfi, a kumfi na na kwa, HC Sunkwa, Jamara, Macron, and mm -hmm. Potsi. We came. It ha, the the money has been secured. The project has just started, and we completed in 2018. How many of them? Ten, you said. They were ten. Ten. Mm. If you come to um, Greater Accra region, there was one at Ashaman, at Adenta Ob uh, Obulugu, mm. Obuluju. Botiano, Oduman, and Sege. Hmm. We came, we started it in 2017, even though the money was, uh, the project money has gone through parliament and everything. And then we finished in 2019, five of them hmm. completed, uh, commissioned, and is in I use. See. And this is what I want to ask you about those facilities. Yes. Um, come how, on. how equipped are these facilities? They are equipped, they are uh, smaller hospitals, facilities? functioning facilities, workers are there working. Then we came and made a Tamale phase uh, one, phase two project, which we completed also in 2019 and put to use. And then there was an, uh, we also started five polyclinics construction, sorry, uh, how many? One, two, three, four, five. That one also started in 2018. That was Weta, Sumenya, Tolon, mm. Sola, Bupi, and Bamboy, which has been completed and in use in 2020. And then this government started another project from VAMED. You continue the, uh, uh, getting money from them, where we put also hospitals, we built hospitals in Western region, which have been completed and in use now. That is at a contumbra. Right. There are 40 beds. These are no more 30 beds hospital or 15 beds, 40 beds. We improve the number of beds so that it can take more pa uh, patients. So at a contumbra, at Bogoso, at Elubu, at Mpoho, at Takwan Swaim and also at Wasa Dunkwao. Mm. They they've all been completed in 2022 and it's being used as we speak now. Then, so, so the point I'm making is yes. that if all of these things have been done, they are functional, yeah. then we are not exactly infrastructure deficits. Why did we need Agenda 111? Yes, thank you very much. During the COVID-19, you remember that patients were being carried from all across the country looking for critical care beds for the patient. We were looking for isolation centers for our patients. Then we asked the Ministry of Health Ghana Health Service to do a survey to find out the 216 or 17, how many districts? 216 districts. Mm -hmm. Districts of our hospitals. And it came at that time that 88 of the 216 districts in this country have no semblance of a district hospital, which means there is no primary referral center in such districts. In the rural districts, where there are no private practitioners there, it means there's not a single doctor in those districts. Districts of about 140, mm -hmm. 100, uh, 150, 200,000 population. So they have to move to other areas for care. So as a, as a, as a lesson from uh, COVID-19, the president said that we have to provide hospitals across the country for all the districts. That's why the Agenda 111 came in. Mm -hmm. 88 of them. But we realized that there are some districts which are so far apart that we have to put two of the hospitals there. That is the reason why this uh, president and no, this but, government but, but then again, came but then out again. of Agenda 111. Then again, yeah. we had a lot of money we were investing in infrastructure. We didn't have a map, up, map out plan of where we wanted to position, strategically position this, these facilities so that people can easily have access to them until COVID-19. Is that what we're no, saying? You know, every government has come to art hospitals. I mean, I will not shy away from that. I will not run away from that. 
it has been continued. But this is the first time that a single government within its terms of office wants to provide the basic primary referral center for all districts. And so actually, I mean, so where I was the fact foresight? We for them. No, hang on. Where, 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 before we clap for you, where was the foresight um, until COVID nineteen? Uh, which, which then told you that some districts, 88 districts, didn't have, you know, primary care facilities. Where was the foresight when we were pumping all that money from all of these other uh, projects in determining strategically where to position a facility so that people can have access to it? That showed boldness for, on the part of His Excellency, the President and his government, that now we are not going to do it in piecemeal. We are going to make sure that every district has a primary referral center. And that was a decision of His Excellency the President, which the cabinet approved, which the government also approved, and that's what we are doing in the Agenda 111. And to me, it's the first of its kind in the whole, in the whole world where a government has come and said that I want to provide first the first referral center so that you don't have to move from one district to another district to go and secure this uh, health. Are there actual timelines associated with this? Uh, yes, project. yes, because um, you see what we are doing in Agenda 111, you realize that we didn't start the whole all the uh, 111 at the same time. For example, as we speak now, the regional hospital, the seven of them, I think it's only one which is running because Minister of Health has a project for Takra, the one. The rest are on hold. We've done the value for money it's at Ministry of Finance because mm -hmm. of the debt restructuring and IMF. So immediately... Uh, we end the debt restructuring, which I know that's going to be this month mm. ending. The contractors will then c complete the negotiations and move to site. I see. The other side, other, other... So when, when do you think that any hospital or facility under the project could be concluded? In the third quarter of this year, we, 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 we will start, we start commissioning some of them. I see. And not all of them, because as I said, not all started at the same time. Mm. We have is this a review on the date? Because I think uh, earlier this year, you said second quarter of this year. You said uh, that by the end of the second quarter, we will be finished. Yes, but, but now you are but, saying by the end of yeah, the but, third but quarter. You see, even if, if you are in construction, in construction, as even we are, we are now in the, the rainy season, maybe you are doing the roads. Some of them are doing the roads and the gutters. If there's too much rains and the place is this, we have to have wait for some time for the ground to be there, then we, we continue. So you can propose that, that's why every construction, you say that this is the estimated time of uh, finishing. I and see. then we move So on we have to, reviewed it to third quarter of this year. Yes, I said from Is this the going to be I another partly or perhaps even a failed promise by this administration? What is a failed promise? If we don't see it as a failed promise. Go to the promise. sites and go and see the work which is being done in most of the sites. Some of them are about 90% completed, as we speak now. Okay. So we are, they are waiting to finish the statues. As we speak also now, we want to also, we have started the procurement of the equipment, which will come in. We finish the evaluation. We will give to the vendors for them to start bringing the procurement, uh, the, the, the equipment. So it is a project. It's a huge project. Mm. 100 over 101 or 102 district hospitals over throughout the whole country. Every region has one. The regions which have the least district hospitals are uh, maybe Buno East, Ahafo, and right. then also... Uh, the smaller regions and then uh, uh, Savannah and Northeast. For example, Volta Range has seven of the projects. There are about three or four of them which are nearing completion. Nearing completion. So th uh, by the end so of the third you, quarter of this year, yes, we you will, say we'll see, we'll we'll see, see some, of them some be, be completed, completed projects. Uh, yeah, projects which will be commissioned. I see. If you go to Western Region, there's one of the projects there which is almost completed. Mm. If you go to Ashanti Region, about three or four or five of them are being nearing completion. The contractors are working assiduously and very fast so that they can, they can, they can deliver the goods to us. But the most important thing is that the progress, so far as some of us are concerned, is good. There are some of them, because of land size, we have to change the drawing. Mm. So they are going to be story building instead of the one, 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 mm. one, one start. I building. see. I and see. So, 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 so how much, uh, what's the estimation on, on how much you're spending on the, on the you know, all, all the facilities we, we have? We've said it over and over again. Average is about 16.8 million. Well, time, million. times change. About uh, 16 the, ex, the currency exchange, remember that we, the it, currency exchange was blamed for uh, vaccine shortages. So I just wanted to know if we are still on this, the same budget. Agenda 111 is dollar 
rated. Okay. So it's sixteen point eight million dollars for the single stack. It's a double stack which we have to add about some about two or three million dollars to it. Oh, I see. So it's is the La General Hospital uh, no. 111 no. project? No. No. So why haven't we, all the funds that we got for the other hospitals, why haven't we, you know, uh, pumped some into uh, the La General Hospital? Have you, uh, uh, have you, have you checked if La General Hospital is not working now? We, we, no, hang I'm on. We know. We know, we know that. No, we've been covering the, the hospital quite well. We know. Has it started or not? Uh, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> you see, when you say has it started or not, that is just a partial, a partial aspect of the project. It took a long time for contractors to be there to work because we've been covering this for a long time and we know that it's only recently that co contractors went back there to cover it. So yes, it has started. But what is the rate? When can the la people expect that their hospitals will be back? When can the people expect that their hospitals will be back? When can uh, Bokoro in Hunter West expect that their hospitals should be back? They are all very important. Every district or every locality needs a safe facility. But one thing is that, you see, people should know, and I want to do this small education, every project has a source of funding. Mm. La, hospital, there was a loan which passed through cabinet to parliament. So it has a different source of funding. So you cannot take, for example, Eurojet money to go and do la. Mm -hmm. You cannot take VAMED money to go and do la. So now, the Ministry of Finance has sorted la and given them some money to uh, this thing. That's why they are on site. And they are That's working. why they are on site they now. Are but it took, now. It, took, it took a lot of time. Yes, but for, it's negotiation. For, for you know, the workers to go there. It is negotiation because we know that for whether we like it or not, there was this debt restructuring, there was an IMF. I know that la. The, the, the financiers, also one of the banks became bankrupt after the COVID. And another, so the other one also withdrew and all sorts of things. So it has started. That's the most important thing. And they are working very hard to move it fast forward. I see. So that's the but most at, important at the thing. Pace of, at the pace of work right now, we have had some timelines as, uh, by the end of the year. Does it look like... I, I'm not... La is not part of Agenda Wawa, which I'm managing. So oh. it's Minister of Health who can tell you the timelines now, the mm. new revised timelines. But I the see. most important thing I want everybody to understand is that La has started and is working. It, it, it has started. Yes. And, and the pace of work is slow. Uh, some of the workers are already complaining that they are not paid what they are supposed to be paid. That, that is the management of the contractor. I, I cannot speak to it. Um, but so, the, it, should, so, it should be something that interests you if the, co the contractor's behavior is going to delay your project. Yes, I will ask the Minister of Health okay. who are managing it. So the other Agenda 11 projects have all started. There are some of them as we speak today. Mm. It's not that the land has been cleared. For example, Nima. I see. Nima. So oh, it's I difficult see. to get land in Nima. Now we've got, we managed to get a land and we are, uh, it's going to be a double stack. Um, Medina, the metros, especially Accra Metro and Kumasi Metro, mm -hmm. had a lot of difficulty getting 15 acre land. So we have to change the drawing. So that's how it is. The most important thing I will tell, I will tell you about Agenda 111 is that we have been going around. It's a project that we have been monitoring very well. Right. The, the, the chiefs and the people tell us that even the thought of government that we are giving you the, this district mm -hmm. and this town a hospital. Is even more than enough. Very well. Mm -hmm. If we have invested that much in infrastructure and these facilities are up oh. and running, mm -hmm. it means that we need human resources for those areas. Thank you. Why do we still have nurses and, and trainees who claim that they are not posted, they don't have jobs? What you, is going on there? You see, the system we have in this country, unlike other countries, where there's a private, they have a very strong private health sector. And there's another, it's also the government, the public health sector, which are competing to take the people that we've trained. In our government employs about 90% of our staff. We as a country, in 2005, through the eviction of President Kofo, said that let's increase the number of our training facilities. Let's also have middle level uh, health professionals, especially nurses. You remember that, that time we had a, a great shortage of nurses. 
to extend that, we have to, if you were, maybe when, if you were not young and you saw what was happening, we have Kofu nurses where they were wearing pink. We trained them on the job and this thing. So we started then training what you call the healthcare assistants. That is a, a nurse assistant clinical, nurse assistant uh, preventive. So we start, uh, there, was, there are a lot of schools now, about 90, I think about 95 schools across the country, including private sector. Okay. We started training midwives directly. At first, you have to do uh, registered nursing before, after one year or so, you go to nursing tra uh, midwifery training for one year. But now we train midwives so that uh, maternal deaths will also go down. So we have a lot of nurses who have been trained. It's government alone who has to employ about 90% of the people. And government works with budget. There are a lot of com uh, computing factors also. He has to employ teachers, he has to employ doctors, he has to employ nurses and everything. That's the reason why we, there's, uh, the employment of people into the health system is a bit slow. But we need all the nurses, we need all the doctors, we need all the pharmacists who have been trained. And if you expand the hospitals, we expand the health infrastructure as we are doing now, then we can then absorb all of them. We've worked all of them out. For Agenda 111, we've worked out the number of staff who will be working in this system. We are negotiating uh, with the Ministry of Finance. How many of the, them do you hope to employ? Per hospital is about 500 staff. Mm. So if you multiply it by the number of hospitals that you want, that's for the district hospital. For regional hospitals, about 1,300. Mm. For the psychiatric hospital, about uh, 550. Then there will be no joblessness or, or health yes. worker. Yes, but... It all so, depends so on was it, the same, was it the same mass that you used in employing for the other facilities you have outlined? Yes. We know. We know. We have, if, if it's the same mass, the then by, the, by now, those who have yes. been unemployed for two yes, years have should have a job now. We have norms. And the norms tells us the number of people that have to be here. But the problem is that you have your norms, you have the people that you have to put into place, but you have to also get the budgetary allocation. So if the budgetary allocation is not there, then you factor it and then start failing it. So I, can, I, I want, want to assure all my nephews and uh, nieces and my grandchildren that uh, they will all get job to do. It's patience. So we are also encouraging the private sector mm -hmm. to also start employing so that they can then compete with government and then also mop up the people who are in the system who are waiting to I be see. employed. So that's how it is. I but see. Agenda 111 is well, well thought well, out and we know the number of people who will work there. We know how we are going to do it mm. and the ones that... And you say a total of how, how many health workers will be employed in this? Uh, I can give you the figures. Okay. Mm. Well, For example, this mm. hospital, per this hospital, we need a total of uh, 549 staff, professional staff and then other staff, which means that if you look at all the district hospitals, about 102 district hospitals that we are putting up, it's about 55,000 or 56,000 people see. that you have to employ. The regional hospital is 1,343. And then times the seven, this regional hospital is about 9,345. Mm. Psychiatric hospital is 947. So a total of people that uh, we need. Then we're going to start importing nurses and, and health workers. Oh, the nurses, we know the number of nurses that we have to employ. Let's talk about the brain drain problem that the health sector also faces. Now, uh, we know that one of the things COVID op opened our eyes to is the fact, the fact that health workers are needed elsewhere. And so um, we've seen them leave the country in droves. Instead of the government doing something about it, it decided to rather add on to it and signed a, a, an MOU with Barbados to export our nurses there. I mean, what was the thinking behind that? The thinking, first, the thinking behind is, I will talk about the brain drain. We are in a free world. For example, you are here. We, no, I, I don't think TV3 or media, uh, what do you call it, media general, media general. Of, can force you to stay here forever. Mm. You even move from one place to another place within the country. The same thing, it's true. Um, COVID-19 has made health professional work not too attractive in the Western world. Because you know that there were a lot of people who died were frontline health workers. I hear, I have heard that even the training schools, they find it difficult to get people to go to the training schools. But we have a lot of young people who even want to enter nursing training schools. So the solution to it, 
to me, it's not the unethical way of coming to take people away. We cannot force anybody to stay in our country. But if the conditions were good, they will stay. If the conditions are good, you, you can stay. But as I said, government employs about 99%. Conditions, if you want to make conditions as attractive as in the, where they go to, then it means we need a lot of Well, attractive to enough to make them stay. Yes. Right now, the conditions are poor. Yes, for everybody in this country. No, for, 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 for the health workers. Yes. The and, conditions and for that matter, for teachers and for any other person. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing it, you have to also balance it. So that's what government wants to do. We want to put in what are the push factors. I know the push factors. If a young person knows that I'm being posted here, as we speak now, even though we don't, people are leaving the country, we are not maybe employing everybody. There are some places where we, we have very shortage of critical care health mm. professionals. Because if you want me to go to some rural community and I go and there's no accommodation, it becomes difficult for me to stay there. So we have to provide that. And to mm. me, that is where the rural incentives come in. That's what government now is going to do. And we can do this thing with the private sector. Very easy. Because any private sector who has its money and wants to go and put blocks of flats mm. somewhere else can also put it there. And then government then maybe assist to No, but why isn't thing. government doing anything about the conditions that some government of government continuously find? is doing things about condition. You remember we've seen this we've seen brain dream before. We know how to tackle it. We know things which will make, for example, some of us come back. We st I studied, I did surgery outside. Mm -hmm. uh, I came back. And when I came back, I think it's okay for me. I mean, I've worked through the system. So people need something, just something soft to be able to stay in your own country. That's it, the first thing. Is that something soft? We are working on that. Available? We are working on that. That's why... Since when? You that, have seven months to go. What, what really can you do oh, within this go period? Governance is continuous. Okay. I don't believe in seven months to go or eight months to go. Governance is continuous. And I know we'll come back. But you've had seven years to be able to do something soft for them. You didn't do something yes, soft. Yes, you've been doing something soft. You have what? been doing something because salaries of health workers is not the same as salaries, for example, for civil well, service. Well, salaries are negotiated Conditions. as... Hang on. Salaries are negotiated as a whole for public sector workers. So yes. I don't think salaries will be one of those things that we would particularly touch on as doing something soft for he uh, health workers it, or nurses in this country. It, it's salaries, it's other conditions like conditions to get yourself upgraded, mm -hmm. conditions to, you see, as I say, I'll tell you, every young doctor, every young nurse wants to do something extra. Every young doctor, for example, when you finish school, you want to be do postgraduate, you want to be a specialist. So it will make that one very easy. That's the reason why we have set up the College of Nursing and the College of Physicians and Surgeons so that you have a straight intake and then go through, through it. We are trying to even make sure that we decentralize this postgraduate training that, so that you don't have to wait for a long time to enter any school, anywhere you are, which we started doing mm -hmm. for both nurses, doctors, pharmacists and everything. The next thing is, I know, the next thing is that the person, the, the professional who has come out should be able to maybe get some means of transport to go around, which we are working on it. For recently, I think it was, has even been announced that the car waiver, which was taken away, for example, I understand for doctors, which I'm sure they will work it for the other staff, is also being reinstated. We are talking to I the see. new car companies. It's, it's all being reinstated. N none of them have timelines. I've seen, no, no, I've seen that something is being done. It's done okay. because I saw some forms which I'm not too sure. I have to find out. New car, new car companies here in this country, we are talking to them to see how it become more conducive. If you go outside there, that's what people do. People are on, I see. on this. Thing. And then, to me, first is the rural allowances, which I've spoken about, accommodation, where they will put their head, where they will have also some mm -hmm. soft listening for this thing. So these are things that, we are sitting, we've sat down, we are working on it and come out very soon with a comprehensive approach to also make their lives very uh, reasonable and also very soft for them. Doc, when, when we come back, we'll talk a bit more about uh, the issues related to the health sector and the health workers particularly. Don't go away.
Welcome back to Hot Issues. I am Kemeni Amano. Today, my guest is Dr. Anthony Insiasare. He is Presidential Advisor on Health, and we've been discussing the health sector, obviously. But, Doc, thank you so much for your patience. Why does the government have no interest in mental health? This government has a lot of interest in mental health. What shows? Under Agenda 111, for the first time in this country, we are putting two mental health facilities, one of them in Tamale, to serve the Northern Belt, and then one in uh, Onri, in Ayusu municipality, to serve the Middle Belt. If you go to Tamale now, it's about 90% completed. It's one of the projects which will be completed as quickly as possible. So it, that if, is one. Hang on, hang on. Mm -hmm. I, I, I understand that you know you have a plan on paper, but the existing no, ones. No, we're executing the plan on paper. We until until, until it's completed, we, we don't have those you know mental health facilities. We only have the three that exist right now. If no. you're not doing anything to support the ones that exist right now, yet you're going on to build, you're giving us hope of the 90% complete one? Well, I don't understand your question. What have you done for places like the premier facility, the Akara Psychiatric Hospital? Akara Psychiatric Hospital is going to be redeveloped. It's part of the ones which are the Ministry of Finance. We are going to pull everything down and redevelop it and re-equip it as a national referral center for uh, psychiatric cases. When? I've told you the regional hospital situation, that immediately the death restructuring is over, contractors will move to site. Until then, the Accra Psychiatric Hospital is still the way it is, depending on, you know, uh, do donations. Madam, I'm, I'm finding it very difficult for, you see, if you are doing project management, right. you start the project, you move on the project, but if you, had, if you continue saying that oh, Accra Psychiatric Hospital is the same, I'm telling you the plans that you have for Accra Psychiatric Hospital. It, it, it can't happen in one day. And, and I'm saying that I understand the plans you have. Yes. However, over the seven-year period the administration has been in office, you'd expect that the Accra Psychiatric Hospital will receive a, a substantial amount of attention uh, such that it, it will not be over-reliant on donations as we see. Yeah, I think government, you know that psychiatric patients are, are taking care of, uh, they don't pay anything for free. And who bears the cost? It's government. So I, I think government is doing everything possible to make sure that mental health services is well taken care of. Mm. And now to extend that, we are asking national health insurance to even add the cost so that it will not be... Uh, they don't have money to buy food. They don't mm -hmm. have money to buy this. Because if you go to other hospitals, once you know that you're going to get money from health insurance, you can even go and credit your commodities. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is one Very of the well. plans that the government is doing. One of the plans that uh, the president had put in his manifesto was to focus on health promotion and prevention as part of primary health care through the National Health Insurance Scheme to achieve universal health coverage. To what extent do you think this has been achieved? Yes, if you remember, we have, as a part of the health promotion, we have been making sure and we have done pilot, state, pilot in some of the hospitals in Ghana Health Service. And now I understand that is, they have expanded it that every district hospital should do that. Where there is a consulting room for medical checks, the only way that people will know that their hypertensives, mm. their diabetes, is that at least once a year, for example, media general, the, the, exec, uh, the management should make sure that every worker here goes through a medical check and come and show it. Right. I call it adult weighing. So that is one. The second point is that if you remember in 2018, Ghana Health Service, we detached the uh, family health, where the health promotion was. So now we have a complete directorate or division of family health uh, uh, division in Ghana Health Service with a director, deputy directors, and the same thing is throughout the regions to do health, uh, health promotion and health education for the citizens. So it, they need to go around, they mm -hmm. need to move around and then also educate people which they are doing. So the next thing that we have to do is this uh, medical, um, uh, free medical Hmm. services, which they are doing now, and we, I know that the National Health Insurance Authority 
has almost completed their children studies to see that if any, anybody who is on national health insurance scheme mm -hmm. would then have one, a, once a year a free medical check I see. Per, per person. Initially to be expensive. Who's going to take that course? National health insurance. The only, same this, he national health insurance scheme that uh, supposedly is bankrupt, is unable to... But National health insurance is not bankrupt. It's not? No. Mm. You know, national health insurance, we all pay for national health insurance if you, buy, if you buy credit. You know why? Mm -hmm. National health insurance levy. Mm. So I've always been seeing that. But is government releasing the funds to yes. the so, accounts of so the that is authority? What, this, that is what parliament mm. and government should sit down together because there's something what you call capping. So yes. that the uncapping will go. And we believe that that should be eventually the case. And have health insurance is not bankrupt. So it can, it can take care of this. Initially, as I said, it will be a slightly expensive. They are working out which goes into, for example, a woman over 50 years, mm -hmm. what will be the test. A man over 50 years, what will be the test. So that from 18 years and above, because children before the age of five, six, go for weighing, either mm -hmm. they are sick or not. So that those from 6 to our 18, they all go to school. So every year you're going mm. to school, you also do your medical check. I mean, Doc, do you know that the National Health Insurance made a very flamboyant promise at the beginning of this month and it's not been able to fulfill? It, it decided to subsidize a, a dialysis for, what do, for what patients. Do, what do you mean by that? It has not been able to fulfill. Uh, because the patients are still paying in full. Yes, but if you... When, when did the... When did the uh, it police. was supposed to take effect June 1st. Yes. Today is June 6th. Yes. So when and did patients they? are still taking... I'm coming, madam. Uh -huh. I find it difficult to accept what you are saying. Mm. You make a policy today okay. of effective June 1st. Uh -huh. So, and the June 1st was uh, a weekend, isn't it? Uh -huh. So Monday was June 3rd. Indeed. And I saw yesterday that National Health Insurance... As, uh, authority chief executive went to Kolebu. Absolutely. Yes. So if you went there on the first, you went there on the second, and you are part of the group, mm -hmm. for example, zero to 18, 16 and above, and then those within, I think, two sections. Yes. And you have a section, and you yes. pay for it. You are given a receipt. So you go back. The next time you go back, it will be refunded to you. Is that the plan? Because no. the patients don't know that. No. Let me tell you. What is the plan? You make a policy here at Media General today. Not everybody will hear about the policy. A letter has to be written and sent to the chief executive. Chief executive has to circulate it. But it means... Has that letter been written? Yes, as I, as I know. Kolebu says that letter hasn't I'm come coming. at the time we checked on the patients. Yes, but I don't know why you were so... Uh, I know that Monday you started checking if the patients are paying. Nobody does that. It will be either somebody goes there or not. You cannot, you cannot even uh, check it. Mm. Because it's, it's people's money. Mm -hmm. So anything that Kolebu does, anything health insurance does, should be documented. I so see. So please, patients, everybody, everybody should who be falls patient. within that range or that policy, if you have paid money on the first or mm -hmm. second or third, it will be refunded to you. It it's as simple as that. I see. I so, see. so I don't think if you say it's flamboyant and they can't fulfill it, it's fulfilled. I want to understand. Yes. When the patients go there now, yes. they will pay. But you're saying you give them back the money. When? Immediately that uh, Kolebu brings a uh, returns for reimbursement, they will be reimbursed and then the patients will be paid. Because dialysis patients, for example, if they, it's about 18, uh, 17 years, it goes there at least twice mm. a week. Do you, do you then fault the kind of communication that was put in the public? Like what? Like the, the it's starting from 1st of June? That, you know, you can walk in and have your, set, your no, two it services didn't say for that. free. I didn't say that. What it said was that from 1st of June, I can mm -hmm. open it for you But I, I know what it said from because it never of... mentioned that you will receive a f refund. It said when you go there, it is free. You are now given the extra explanation that even if you have paid, you will get your refund. Yes. And I'm trying to understand. Okay, so when exactly will patients start to get the refunds? If you ask me that, and I'm telling you that, when Kolebu wants to give a refund, they have to refer to a document. Uh. Now, I'm sure they've received the letter now. Okay. Because no, 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 no chief executive in Kolebu or administrator in Kolebu has said, go and collect your money. If auditors come, where did you get the letter from? So it's, it's a process. Mm. For example, government can make an announcement today 
And if there's supposed to be a refund, you don't get a refund immediately the same day. All right. Then the letter should have been clearer. That's, you no, know, you don't you... write in a policy statement. You don't put all those things in. In a policy statement, so far as I know, over my years of being a manager, is that we are starting this policy from this date. So it means if 31st of June, anybody who falls within that bracket I absolutely understand that. What but I'm, you don't add it I, in the I absolutely communication, understand that. The I'm communication saying that, that you get the communication never talked about refunds. The hospital authorities didn't know about refunds. They said they had not received any communications from the authority or government that they needed to give the services for free. Which hospital authority do you speak to? Uh, the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Which authority? I don't understand who, what which, you mean no, by which, also. You which, want me to give you a name? No, I can't give you a name. No, but, 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 you know, if but, you but I'm to, telling you that is what we picked up when we were there. If you go to Kolebu and there's a policy mm -hmm. and you want to know how the policy is working, to get an authentic uh, decision or uh, authentic management decision on it, the best person to talk to is a chief executive. Not a nurse. No. No. Not, not, I, not even a manager at that stage. It's a chief you, executive. You, no, you won't rile me to give up my source. But once you have admitted that indeed a letter needed to be written, and I have said that the letter, as we, we went there, we were told the letter, go, had not be, you know, the letter had not arrived. When did you go there? I think we are on the same page, right? Yeah. So, we, uh, so we what are on I'm the saying, same page. The reason that's, why I'm that's, saying that, I chaired that committee uh -huh. for National Health Insurance. Right. There was a Kolebu chief executive who was a member of that committee. Then we shouldn't be here. Tamale chief executive was a member of that committee. Uh, Cape Coast chief executive was a member of that committee. The president of the Dialysis Patients Association was a member of that committee. So he knows. Everybody knows. Everybody and knows. And we discuss it there. So he was representing the dialysis patients. Right. So he has an association, and most of them are in Kolebu. 80% of these dialysis patients are in Kolebu, which as a comprehensive mm -hmm. strategic plan that we want to do. Chronic kidney cases, it's not only dialysis, and I want to repeat it here. Mm -hmm. It's not only about dialysis. It's about prevention, mm -hmm. early detection, early treatment of the underlying causes, which are mainly the hypertension and diabetes. Oh, is this in reference to the... Yes, I'm coming okay. there. Dialysis. And people do dialysis waiting to have kidney transplant and kidney transplant and rehabilitation. There are six major things, which we as a committee member, as government, we are looking at it holistically. Okay. And our candidate will come out to give you what we have for not only chronic uh, kidney cases, but, but also chronic, chronic diseases. diseases. Mm. And to me, not everybody who mm. is on kidney, you see the, the numbers who are in Kolebu are just a tip of the iceberg. There are people who are in my village or in some village who has kidney problem, but he doesn't know where to go. Indeed. So that with Agenda 111, we will put strategic dialysis right. machines. But, but, but let's, let's, let's deal with the NHI issue, because then if, if Kolebu Tamale and all the other hospitals where dialysis take place were on... Uh, Tamale was not part of Tamale. Uh, because, yeah, they, they brought us all their figures. Okay, right. Uh, then, I mean, do you worry that after you had taken a good plan for the patients, uh, the re resulting communication didn't go around well for, uh, for instance, Kolebu to start giving services to patients? I don't blame Kolebu, and I'm not holding brief for Kolebu. As I said... It takes a few days for these uh, policy statements to be well documented and written by Kolebu. Because Kolebu management has to write. A I don't letter. think the problem is Kolebu because but Kolebu, is where? Kolebu were waiting for the communication from the National Health Insurance Authority. Yeah, so maybe health insurance delayed. Maybe if I, I'm also holding brief for them. <laughs> Immediately the statement came out on that in Saturday, isn't it? or Friday, it came out on Saturday, on the first, first right. of Saturday. Immediately it came out and it became, you should have maybe sent the letter the, to them immediately on Monday morning, or even if I'm the one, I'll have sent the letter on Friday. I, I, agree, I, I agree with you. Let's, let's, let's wrap but, up but, on but, the but health they insurance get, issues. But they will get their refund. So they will I, get I can their assure refund. the patients mm. that anybody who falls within that bracket, 
and who has paid money for dialysis will get refund. Mm. So if a major who is your president, he calls himself his major, he called major, is listening to me, he should tell them that everybody should calm down. That it's a policy. The money is there. And the, and the Kolebu will be and the other hospitals will be refunded. I'm sure they are so happy to hear money. that they will yeah. get the refund. But the categorization, there are people who have raised questions about the categorization that people within the 1859 uh, age group are only getting two sessions. And even in the case of Kolebu, it's just a 50% subsidy. I mean, what went into that thinking? Yes. Um, you know, when you, have, you want to do something and you don't have all the money to do the thing, you face the first people that you have to look at the, is the vulnerable group. Okay. So the vulnerable group, in this case, are the children and those above 60. So uh, National Health Insurance, from their own corporate social, social, corporate social responsibility fund, mm -hmm. decided that they, can, they want to add something to also alleviate the plight of uh, the people within the age of uh, 18 to 59. Right. And... They said, that, okay, let's give them some, uh, I mean, some two sections mm -hmm. so that they can also be relieved. So that's what they are doing. Mm. And I know that they have eight sections, a minimum eight sections. Some of them have 12 sections. But that's why I said that dialysis per se, if you're a billionaire mm. and you're on dialysis for mm. 10 years, you become a pauper. And that's this is, why. This is only for six months. Is, yeah. there, is there a future where we would put this, you know, specifically yeah, there's a future. on the that's why I National say that, Health Insurance that's Scheme? That's why I say that our candidate, His Excellency, the next president, uh, Dr. Baumia, will come out of a, a very comprehensive uh, statement, what you want to do when mm. God's willing, he was giving the chance. I, I'm happy to hear that we are looking into chronic diseases. I just hope that we can have time to... Uh, you know, understand what work is going into studying the, the increasing cases of chronic diseases like liver disease and all that in the country. Uh, but when we come back, we'll look at other as aspects of insurance and then move into uh, other areas. Don't go away. Well, thank you so much for staying with us here on Hot Issues. Still with me is Dr. Anthony Nsiasare. He is Presidential Advisor on Health. We've been having an insightful conversation on the health sector and some projects that uh, he in particular uh, has great knowledge of and in charge of. Is it? Right. Thank you so much, uh, Doc. Let's talk about the recent standoff at the ports uh, when we had a uh, very important medical, medical equipment and medicines coming in for uh, HIV, AIDS, uh, people living with HIV and AIDS and tuberculosis, and yet there was this standoff for a long time. I mean, what, what really happened? Um, yes, uh, it's an unfortunate situation. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been a director general of Ghana Health Service before, so I know about global funds commodities which come into the country. Normally, when they are coming, we get to know about it. Right. Then we have to prepare yourself to clear them for the post as quickly as possible. I got to know about it very late. Uh, we started working on it assiduously. We are still working on it. I don't think all of them have been have cleared. Have been cleared, that's true. Yes. Which we are still working on it. Because if you leave things in the port for a long time, it will create damages. That's where the problem mm -hmm. is. And I say every time that damages are payment of inefficiency. If you're inefficient, you pay them wages. Right, so, so the person who's cost us this much in demorages and port charges, um, is, is that person still has a job? I'm not too sure. I'm not in the Ministry of Health. But we are finding a solution to it. And I think it has reached a stage where it's of the Ministry of Finance. Because, you see, this country is governed by law. So laws, there's law on the... Exemptions. Mm -hmm. There's tax exemption regime, but there's, there's a complete act on it which you have to pass through. Sometimes it becomes difficult. Sometimes you, t you tell yourself that ah, why should there all be these laws and all this, but you have to follow it. Mm -hmm. A GRA personnel who is at the port will not release anything if he doesn't have the authorization. True. Minister of Finance 
it's not the people, they are not supposed to be the people who will also exempt. Ideally, it's parliament. So I'm saying this, so that Parliamentary Select Committee on Health and Parliament should also try and also come in so that they all assist for the rest of the goods to be cleared. To be cleared. It, I mean, this is not politics, but this is pure health. health issues. And to me, health is not politics. So I will clear it, and hopefully most of the things can then get to where they are supposed to. Because I just heard that uh, they've cleared the malaria goods. That's what I've heard. Mm -hmm. I think what is left is the TB Mm. And I think the, HR, the HIV, ARVs. some of them have been also been cleared. So I will get the TB drugs to the people so that if you are not very careful, all of us will have a, a MDR, that's mm. a, <laughs> the a resistant TB. And it becomes a problem. Mm. You are just walking and there's somebody who has it or they yeah. infect you. It's a public so health It's threat. a public health uh, issue. It's a threat. And uh, I believe that uh, anybody who is listening to me, that is supposed to do something about it. She sure. just signed the paper yeah. and let us move on and clear all of them from the ports. Indeed. And to me, um, I was also a bit sad when I heard it for the first time from the Global Fund mm. uh, representative in the country. That's the reason why we started working on it. Working and on we that. are working closely together mm. with the Minister of Health and then also with the Minister of Finance to make sure that we get it out. Doc, what's the status of our routine vaccinations? There was a time when the country ran out of vaccines. And, and then we got a measles outbreak. Yeah, now I know that the vac we have managed that one. And uh, I think there's now there's no shortage of any vaccines. Mm. And going forward, that's the reason why we want to manufacture our own vaccines. Because we cannot always depend on people to bring us vaccines. Mm -hmm. Even if it's in the country. And we are buying it ourselves. We buy right. the, the, some of them from the factories which are doing the vaccines. We will be paying in cities, not in dollars. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we also have some support from Gavi. And we also know that Gavi, on 31st of December 2029, will also be transitioning out. So we have to, we are preparing ourselves very well so, so to be able to be like what Nigeria is doing, South Africa is doing. I see. But I can say that for vaccination, we've done very well in EPI. On the program immunization. We should not let That's it go. That's good to hear. That's mm -hmm. good to hear. But while we're on the subject of vaccine, we've had, you know, the issue with AstraZeneca on the global market. They have pulled out. But prior to that, we heard about the blood clotted issues. Are Ghanaians at risk of these fatal blood clots? No, if you get the blood clots, it's immediately after the first dose. And most Ghanaians took the, Is that the case? There are people who, you know, mums on uh, got the blood clots and they have traced it back to the AstraZeneca they took in the U.S. Oh, I think maybe they have some, they were predisposed to blood clots. You see, let me tell you something. AstraZeneca has withdrawn AstraZeneca COVID vaccines, not purely because of the, compli of the complications, but because of market. But we don't expect the corporate because organization to admit that we are withdrawing it. After you've given it to millions of people, we are withdrawing it because of social and so And let's not forget. No, they didn't, let's not they, forget. They didn't, talk, they didn't talk about the black clothes. They didn't talk about it, they, but they, pre they previously. Withdrew, yeah, but... No, Doc, hang on. Let me, make, let me make the point. Let's set it up so that uh, you, you, know, you, you can respond to that. Previously, yes. they had admitted to the fatal blood clots that their vaccines could be causing those. Uh, months on... They decided to pull, and the reason they gave at the corporate level was because uh, they were, uh, you know, it was it was a marketing issue indeed that they didn't think that their product was fetching them the money they needed. They were putting into the cost of production. However, we know that in the height of COVID, the UK stopped using Astra AstraZeneca for medical reasons, and those same AstraZeneca were pushed over here. So my question is: Are we at risk as Ghanaian people who took AstraZeneca wholeheartedly? No, we are not at risk. That's why I say that if you if you get it, it's mainly in the f for after the first dose, a few weeks after the first dose. So if you didn't get it during that time, it's not likely. Okay. You see, when you look at risk, for example, I always say that drinking water is also at, you are at risk. You can choke and die. Anything that you take into your body, which is foreign, mm -hmm. has some complications. But you weigh the benefits against the complications. That's what is done every time by the uh, scientists. And when okay. we wait, we know that it's good for us and they move on. But as I said, AstraZeneca have withdrawn it, not because of the complication, but mainly because of uh, marketing. If you are making millions... Are we still giving AstraZeneca in Ghana? I, I think the most, most of the uh, vaccines, uh, COVID vaccines we have in the country are Pfizer. 
So if they have withdrawn it, we I also see. will draw it so oh. that uh, we don't. So you won't get AstraZeneca to buy again. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. Let's talk about a place that you were head of, uh, Kofanoche Teaching Hospital. Yes. Uh, you were medical chief medical director there. Is okay. that a position? Chief executive. Yeah. Chief executive officer, indeed. Up uh, in the longest. The longest chief executive yes. director, uh, yes. chief executive officer for Confanochi Teaching Hospital. Yes. I see. But you have really gone through the ranks because I know you were at the district level too, uh, you know, yes. manning also also facilities. Yes, also at Tamale. <laughs> Indeed. So let's talk, <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about Confanochi Teaching Hospital, right? Yeah. The doctors recently were sent out of their homes. Um, they didn't have accommodation because of that. They threatened to strike. Uh, they did, I mean... What do you think about that? It's a shame, isn't it? It has been sorted out in a way. But I think it was a misunderstanding. They were not sent away from their homes. I heard that a, a private developer has bought that area and he wanted them to move. But they sat down with a private developer. If I'm a private developer, I will always be threatened that I want to come and take my property and put up my buildings. But they sorted it out and... No oh, wait, so where the doctors live is not government property? You know, there were government areas which, in, like here in uh, cantonments and also in Accra, where it has been also been given out for private development. Mm. So that's how it happened. So but government sold off where the doctors live before it could provide them new I don't know who sold it, if it's government or is the, but if it's, the chiefs. If, but if it's government property... The chief couldn't have sold it unless yes. government had reverted the property the, or the land back to... Yes, I think the government reverted the land to the chiefs. And the government was putting up blocks of flats for them, which were not finished. It didn't finish enough, uh, early enough for them to move in. And then the developer and the was also waiting. But I see the, the problem was that the developer was dealing directly with the doctors, with the, with the doctors who were residing there. But the chief executive quickly came in and took it upon himself and then negotiated on behalf of the, his uh, doctors mm. and everything. But would the right thing have been that uh, alternative accommodation was found for the doctors before they were, you know, evicted? If you give land back to chiefs and they are in a hurry to maybe <laughs> to also give it out to people to come and develop. So they were not evicted per se. But the, 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 the private developers were threatened to come and evict them. But as I said, it was amicably sorted out. Doc, thank you for coming. This is all we have time for. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you talking to us. Thank you very much. And thank you too for watching us today on Hot Issues. I'm Kemeni Amano and I've been sitting with Presidential Advisor on Health, Dr. Anthony Insia Asari. We hope to see you same time next week here on the program. Until then, bye-bye.